Hi friends, and welcome to episode 9 of the Fibre Bound podcast. My name is Alexandra and I'm coming to you today from Adelaide, Australia, where I live with my husband, our two teenage sons and our lovable dog, Shorty. Today is Sunday the 30th of May and the day has gotten away from me. I had planned to sit down to record this first thing this morning and it is now I think 4pm. Make that 4.30pm. So I'm hoping that I can get through this recording pretty quickly for you so that I can finish my Sunday afternoon chores and get ready for the working week. I don't know where today has gone. Honestly, we left the house at about 11 this morning thinking that we'd be gone for maybe an hour and we got home just before 4 p.m. from running around and doing some things that we had to do. And here we are, 4.30 p.m. on Sunday. The weekend is almost over for us. And it's fine, it's been a very productive weekend, so I can't really complain. But what I had planned to do is record first thing this morning, announce our winner for the giveaway from episode eight. And I will do that now. I'll draw the winner right away. And I will announce that um, later in the episode. Today's episode will have a couple of, well, one finished object and a couple of works in progress. I've been a little bit monogamous the last couple of weeks. I'm on a deadline, so when I'm on a deadline, I tend to try to stay focused and not deviate. Otherwise, I feel like I'm not progressing on anything and I get a little bit anxious about that. So whilst it's so fun to cast on new projects and I have been itching to cast on a couple of things, it has been lovely to see the progress that I've been able to make in two weeks and I can't wait to show you everything that I've been up to. I have however had a bit of a influx of purchases come in so I do have a decent segment on acquisitions to share with you as well. So stick around Grab a cup of coffee or tea or wine. It is probably wine o'clock now, but I am actually drinking a coffee today. I haven't stopped all day and I'm one of those people who loves coffee for the taste of it, not for the effects of it. And I find that I don't struggle to sleep after coffee in the evenings and I'm known to drink a coffee right before bed some days and sleep fine. Um, so I have a coffee with me. I hope you have a beverage or whatever you like to drink with you and some knitting or crochet and are ready to sit down and have a chat about what I've been up to. I'm drinking my coffee today out of a brand new mug. It is a mug that I picked up from the Crazy Sock Ladies Spreadshirt Shop and it is in honour of the upcoming summer sop... <laughs> summer sock camp that is starting on Tuesday June 1st. I can't believe it's almost June already. So I'll just show you this before I start talking about the knitting. Okay so we were able to customize these and as you can see I have added some text to the bottom of mine <laughs> with my name and my camper status. Cam camper status. So that was fun and on the back I've put my logo just for a bit of fun there. So I'll talk more about Summer Sock Camp later 
and if you are participating I highly recommend Kay's uh, Spreadshirt merchandise store. It has some amazing products in there and this is the first that has arrived so far. I do have a few other things that I ordered after this arrived. I was so impressed with it. So without further ado, let's get into the knitting. That's what we are all here for, right? So let's do that. So my first and only finished object today is, unsurprisingly, a pair of socks. <laughs> I am participating in the monthly knit along by Desert Vista Dye Works. It's the seventh annual monthly sock club. That's wrong again. Seventh annual Desert Vista Dye Works sock club. <laughs> and I have finished my May socks. So here they are. These are in the colorway If They Kill Daryl and they have been knit for my son's 17th birthday which is coming up in August so I'm feeling very organized by having these done already. I knit the 64 stitch sock for his pair. I did a 2x2 two two rib cuff for 20 rows. Then I did the leg for around 50 rows. I tried a heel flap and gusset for the first time on one of these self-striping uh, sock yarns and it actually worked out quite nicely without too much interruption of the stripe sequence. And then I did I think about 68 rounds, sorry rounds not rows, on the foot of the sock and then a rounded toe at the end. I'm really happy with how these turned out. Um, I, it was a bit of an experiment to try the heel flap and gusset and it worked out really well on this particular gauge of sock, um, on the stitch count and on the fact that it's a four stripe sequence. Perhaps if it had been a six or seven stripe sequence there could have been issues there but I'm really happy with how this worked out and I will probably try it again because I do like the way these heels fit. Can you hear my family moving around out there? <laughs> oh dear, I'm trying to record when everyone is in the house is going to be interesting today. So yes, uh, I think I mentioned already this is the colorway if they, if they kill Daryl um, and I really am very happy with how these worked up and especially happy because uh, yesterday my son was talking about wanting more hand knit socks so these will go into the gift box for him for August so that's really exciting. So I think that's all I need to say about these. Um, you hear me talk about these every month granted they change up a little bit now and then especially this time with the heel flap but if you do have any questions about them uh, feel free to comment down below. I will link which I forgot to say as I always do I will link everything in the description box including links to my Ravelry project pages any shops that I talk about any podcasts that I mention and I do have a few to mention today and um, please feel free to check that description box below if there is anything that is missing please feel free to reach out and message me or comment below and I will get those links to you as soon as I possibly can or that information to you as soon as I possibly can. So this is my only finished object and I'm very happy with it. May socks are done. I finished these a couple of days ago now so that's on that that's I've lost the words. So, <laughs> So that's on time for May which is fantastic and I'm so excited about casting on my June socks with the yarn I showed you last episode and I didn't bring that yarn in here with me so I will show you that in the next episode. Now just as a side note which I forgot to mention because I'm terrible at this um, I am recording in a different location today. I decided instead of rearranging my bedroom and the backdrop that I usually have in there I thought I'd try recording in my study today. With the light quickly fading though I've had to readjust a little bit but I think this this has worked okay. I don't feel that it took me any less time to set up <laughs> than it does when I do it in my bedroom 
but hopefully this background works for you. Um, there's no yarn in the background so that's a little sad but I have a nice little candle and some lights just over here for you so hopefully that still looks okay. Um, yes, just thought I'd try something different. It's nice to have options especially when everyone is home today. So let's move into my works in progress. My first work in progress is in this pretty project bag by the knitting dentist, Krista. I will link her Etsy store down below. Absolutely love her bags. And this is housing a pair of socks that I am knitting for my niece. <laughs> and it looks a bit funny and I'll explain why in a minute. Here they are. I'm knitting these two at a time on a 40 inch Chow Gu red lace cable and I forgot to mention I knit all of my socks on a 2.25 millimeter needle US size 1 and these are my scrappy Sunday socks. This progress keeper is by the crazy sock lady and the reason why these are my scrappy Sunday socks is that this is leftover scrap yarn from a pair of socks that I knit myself in February and I decided to knit my niece a pair with that leftover yarn for her birthday in June. So this is basically a modified Magic Heel sock. Um, I did change the stitch count based on the Rye Socks by Tin Can Knits uh, for my niece's age group and um, they're working out really beautifully. So now they looked a little bit funny. I actually had the balls of yarn hidden in there. What I'm finding when I put these away in my project bag, I'd get the yarn all tangled up around the needle and the cables because there's two balls going at once. And if I pop them into the socks in between working on them, it just keeps it a little bit easier to pick up and knit on without having to worry about unraveling the tangles that seem to develop. I don't know how that happens. You put them in the bag, you close the bag and somehow when you pull everything out again it's tangled. I, is it just me? It, it seems really odd but it seems to be happening a lot with this pair and granted it's my first pair of two at a time socks in a very long time and it's certainly the first time I'm doing it from two separate balls. So perhaps it, I just have to be more careful with how I put them in there and how I then pull them out. But I don't have time a lot of the time to think about it and it's just a quick shove in the bag. <laughs> so if I'm conscious to shove these into the sock, I feel like it's a little bit of a more pleasant experience when I go to pick them up again. So okay, um, I mentioned that they're um, a rye sock size. I think I've cast on 52 stitches for this particular pair. And I did a two by two rib cuff as I usually do. Now I think I only did it for around 12 to 13 rounds, maybe 15 rounds here. And then I worked the leg for I think five, one, two, three, four, five, six stripes. I didn't actually count the rows on this one I just sort of went by stripes and then I did the magic heel on the back here so you can see that texture here now the magic heel pattern is by the autumn acorn uh, Judy so I will link that below for you as well or I'll link my project page which has the um, pattern hyperlinked within it and I finished the heel part and now I'm working on the foot and it looks to me like I still have plenty of yarn left so I will work the foot probably for six rows of the colour before I start the toe decreases. I think that should be sufficient for her little foot that might even be a little bit big for her but given that she'll be six um, it'll give her some growing room and she'll hopefully get a bit of wear out of these for a little while and I probably won't have them with me when I record next. Uh, her birthday is on the 4th of June and I'm hoping to get them done before then but I will certainly take some photos and share that with you when I record my next episode because they will be done by then. I am trying to work on these mainly on Sundays um, but now that I have no sock needle, no socks on my needles until the 1st of 
June, well, I do have a sock, but I haven't really been inspired to work on it lately. But um, my May socks are done. I'm holding off until June 1st until summer sock camp starts to cast on my next socks. So these have been a bit of car knitting and they will be lunch break knitting at least on Monday when I'm at work tomorrow. So they've been quite fun to work up. And I was talking to some friends the other night, they asked me, how are you finding the two at a time? And my automatic response was, I'm hating it. But that's not actually true. I'm not hating it. It's just a different process. You have to think a little bit more to make sure your yarn doesn't get tangled in the transition because you knit um, one sock with that yarn and then you drop that, you'll pick up this yarn, you'll knit the second sock and then when you turn it around, or this way, um, again you work on that second sock and then you drop that and then you pick the yarn up for the first sock and you work across. So it's a little bit of a different mindset I guess. What I am loving about the two at a time is that they're going to be finished at the same time. I've mentioned before I don't get second sock syndrome, it's not a problem for me to have to start a second sock as a general rule but I am on a deadline with these and I wanted to make sure that I knew that I was definitely going to be on track to finish them in time so I thought I'd give this method a try and it's fun to try something new um, see what you like see what you don't like about it and either do it again or not <laughs> and I think I will do it again at some point um, it's not my go-to method I don't think but it is, it has been, well it has felt like it's very quickly knit up to this point which is great because I've probably only worked on it for three Sundays maybe. I don't feel like I've worked on it for too long so that's been really good. So these are my niece's birthday socks and I felt like I talked about them for so long. It seems my camera cut me off at some point and I'm not actually sure where I got cut off. <laughs> so I think I was talking about my final finished object. I think I was up to that. My final work in progress today is in a bag by the Knitting Den Shop or Knitting Dentist on Instagram. I love her bags. They're just so beautiful, such great fabric choices and so beautifully well made. And this is housing another gift for my niece. It seems to be a bit of, well it has been a very gift knitting couple of weeks, which is a little bit unlike me. I tend to not gift knit that much, so this is a bit unusual. But I have been enjoying all the knitting time I've had with these projects. So maybe I'm more of a gift knitter than I realise. <laughs> so, okay, so this is the Anchors Jacket by Petite Knit. And this is the progress I've made. When I recorded last, I was at this Progress Keeper here, which is a gorgeous Progress Keeper by Whatnot, an Australian maker and podcaster. Is he facing the right way? No, he's not. There he is. He's a cutie pie. Little reindeer there. He's so cute. Or she. They are so cute. So I've made a lot of progress on this one. And I've bound off the body for the second time. If you watch me on Instagram, <laughs> I did post that I was about to bind off again. I finished knitting on this initially on I think Monday or Tuesday night and looked at it laid out and thought wow that looks really short and tiny. So I called my sister to see if she could measure either my niece or um, an outfit of hers, one of her cardigans that fits her at the moment. But she wasn't home at the time and um, so I asked my mum to do that when she was babysitting her and the measurement seems okay it seems like it would have fit her but I still thought it just looked so tiny and my niece is quite tall for her age so I thought I'd add an extra inch of length to the body before the ribbing and so I did that uh, the last couple of days and now it feels like it might last her a little bit longer than just this season and I'm really happy with how it worked out actually. Um, I am knitting the six to seven year old size 
and the the pattern is absolutely lovely I've really enjoyed knitting on it and I've followed this two pattern apart from adding that extra length there's a lot of one by one rib in this and I think I mentioned last time when I do one by one rib I knit it in combination knitting so that means I um, purl through the back loop purl through I <laughs> twist the yarn in an opposite direction to uh, reorientate the stitches but I make sure that I don't twist the stitches in particular so if you're interested I might link a tutorial that I use for combination knitting that has helped me and it just makes my one by one rib look a little bit tidier I tend to usually avoid one by one rib because I feel like mine it just looks a little bit sloppy and this seems to have made it look a little bit nicer so I'm interested to see how it looks when it blocks out but I'm quite happy with how that's working up so far now I did um, go in to pick up the um, button band last night but realized it was very late so maybe I was a little bit too tired but I did it twice and realized that I was a few stitches short on the button band here which felt odd seeing as I added extra length um, so I will be pulling that out this evening and I will try a different pickup ratio along the edge here so it is a paid for pattern so I won't won't say what the pickup ratio is in the pattern but what I will try is picking up three skipping one that has worked for me on cardigans before so I'll see if that helps me to pick up a better number of stitches because the last thing I want is for the button band to come in at the edges I want it to be nice and flat along the edges there so I'm looking forward to seeing how that knits up and then I've got the two sleeves to go now my niece's birthday is in less than a week now it's next Saturday well it's actually Friday Friday is her actual birthday but I'll be seeing her on Saturday and ideally I would like to get this finished before her birthday but realistically I'm accepting of the fact that that's probably not going to happen seeing as I'm lost a couple of days of knitting time this week after ripping back that ribbing and redoing it but I'm okay with that. I've got socks that I that will be ready for her for her birthday. So even if this ends up being a little bit later, she doesn't know I'm making it for her unless, of course, she's watching this today. Um, but I, I'm happy to gift it to her as soon as it's done. Um, and I'll see how far I can get in this week. I will try to make this a priority for my knitting time after work and look forward to seeing the finished object if I still have it in my possession when I record next I'll be sure to share that with you um, if I have gifted it to her by then I'll have some photos to show you on how that worked up but it's a lovely pattern if you're looking for something to knit for a child um, it's a lovely quick knit this yarn is a DK weight yarn now my yarn actually fell down so let me grab that This is um, the denim mal mal denim mal denim marble. It's the denim mal yarn by Maker or Lincraft here in Australia. It is um, mainly an acrylic yarn with a little bit of wool. I think it's an 80-20 acrylic to wool ratio let's have a look yes 80% acrylic 20% wool now I don't think I've mentioned before I generally don't knit with acrylic unless I'm knitting for children or um, if I want something that's very easy care because I know that my sister will probably pop this in the washing machine and I didn't really want it to be risk <laughs> I didn't want there to be a risk of felting or um, the like so I figure 20% wool is probably not too crazy it is machine wash noted on the label um, I will hand wash it before I give it to her and um, but it should work up fine in the washing machine given that acrylic content in there um, and in terms of the acrylic content in this yarn I don't feel like it it doesn't feel plasticky to me to work with I've really quite enjoyed working with this yarn it's it's a lovely yarn to work with so if you're in Australia and you've seen this in Lincraft there are a few different colors available and you're looking for some DK weight yarn 
to <laughs> that's quite affordable this this is probably a good option it comes in a hundred gram balls and I bought three I'm on my second one now and I don't think I've even used half of it yet so I don't know how much of that third one I will use but I am planning to make full length sleeves for this and um, yeah we'll see how we go now I did forget to say that I'm knitting this on the recommended needle size it's a four millimeter or US Seven, I believe US 6 US 6 4 millimeter I did not gauge swatch for this project and I think my gauge is a little bit bigger than anticipated but I'm not sad about that because as I said my niece is a little bit bigger than your average six-year-old she's very tall uh, so I feel like this will give her a little bit more wear if my gauge had been smaller that's when I probably would have panicked <laughs> But I'm not too fussed when it comes to children's sizing. If they're a little bit bigger, that's fine. It just means they get to wear it for a little bit longer. So don't do as I do though. Um, do gauge swatch. I do highly recommend gauge swatching. But I really was on a bit of a deadline with this one and just didn't. And honestly, I don't generally for kids' garments. I just knit away. Terrible, I know. <laughs> What's your knitting um, faux pas? What do you do that you shouldn't do in knitting or what don't you do that you should do? My thing is a uh, lazy gauge swatcher. It's, it's real my friends. I do not like to gauge swatch very much. But I will tell you that you should because you know it's the responsible thing to do. <laughs> So that is my final work in progress and I will share with you some of the acquisitions I've had arrive in the mail. Some are not brand new acquisitions, I may have ordered them a few weeks or even a few months ago but I've had a lot of things arrive over the last two weeks that I can't wait to share with you. So let's get into that. Have a sip of my coffee first. It's still hot. It's on my heating tray that I have talked about plenty of times. I love that thing. So the first thing that I think I will show you is this brand new project bag that I received in the mail. And this is by a local maker called Fig and Sparrow. I actually reached out to the maker of this project bag and asked for a custom make because they're not a project bag maker actually. They make um, like makeup bags and nappy bags and waterproof lined cosmetics bags and things like that which are fantastic and they're just such beautiful makers located here in Adelaide that I was very keen to get my hands on one of their products because they're just so beautiful and reached out to the makers on Etsy and asked if they would mind or if there was a possibility for a custom size bag. So they were super responsive, uh, responded to me within 24 hours and we discussed the size that I was after based on a product that they already have in their store and so they made that for me and sent it to me and I love it. So here it is. This is by Fig and Sparrow. Their label or their tag is right there. Hopefully that is visible. And I love polka dot all the things so I fell in love with this lovely green fabric with polka dots on it and had to have it. So this is actually housing the swatch that I showed you last time that I have not touched and the yarn from Rosehip Island that I showed you last time and will be the home of the Anna T once I start it. Now hopefully I get a chance to start that once some of these gift knits are done because I really I've been <laughs> every night this has been sitting on the couch next to me waiting for me to pick it up. Oh, I've got a fluff on my nose but I just haven't had time to pick it up so it's been a bit sad looking at me unloved for two weeks <laughs> but I will try to pick this up very soon and get a start on this project because now it has the perfect project bag so that's my first acquisition. My second acquisition, well second and third maybe, oh, I think I've still got fluff on my face, 
is more Summer Sock Camp merchandise. So, I got a So Crazy Crafter project bag for Summer Sock Camp 2021. And I am so happy with it. It's drawstring. I chose the grey lined one. Um, she had the option of having a purple lined or a grey lined one. And I am really happy with the grey. Don't know if you can hear the background noise. The garage door is closing right now. <laughs> so I got my project bag ready. And I also was able to catch... Wow, that's a lot of noise. Um, I was also able to catch uh, Kay's update for her merchandise in her Etsy store when she released that in April. And these arrived this week. So let me show you these little cuties. So I got the Progress Keeper with the 2021 logo on it. And it's turned around the wrong way, but I got the cuff, Team Cuff Down Progress Keeper there. And I also got the pin for this year because I have last year's pin as well so I thought I couldn't resist having this year's pin to add to my collection so I feel like I'm all ready for summer sock camp <laughs> oops I dropped one but I have already also shown you my mug so I am loving this mug so I'll be drinking all the coffee and I'll be knitting all the socks throughout June and July so I'm very excited to get started on that make along that Kay from the Crazy Sock Lady is hosting for the second year in a row. And if you are a sock knitter, please join us. It is free to join. You just basically make socks. And if you finish socks in that period, you can enter them on Kay's Ravelry group or via the hashtag that I'll pop on the screen below as well. So I'll also link Kay's video to her details and explanation on Summer Sock Camp for any questions that you may have. You'll be able to get the answers there. My plan is to knit um, the Desert Vista Dye Works yarn that I received last episode. I also have a lovely yarn from, I think it's Obsession Yarns, which is a sock set that I can't wait to cast on. And I have had some other things arrive this week that um, will also be used for summer sock camp that I'll show in a minute. Uh, I have, I, I usually knit my socks on Magic Loop, which I will probably have at least one pair done on Magic Loop. I do nine inch circulars sometimes, so perhaps that may happen, but I am really keen to try the higher, higher flyers and they have been ordered and I'm waiting for them to arrive. Now thank you to Courtney from the Knit Now Swatch Later podcast who raved about her experience with using the higher higher flyers which enabled me totally <laughs> to, to find some and order them. It was almost impossible to find any in stock though. Um, here in Australia there's nothing in stock. I even checked the higher higher website and I couldn't find the size I wanted there but somehow found a pair on Etsy. So definitely if you're keen to try those out, search high and low, you may still be able to get your hands on a set so that you can also try them out. Um, and I will let you know how I go with those once I get them and try them. I know Kay isn't so in love with them at the moment, um, it's just not her favourite method right now but I'm still keen to give it a go. I do have DPNs as well, but I don't knit socks on DPNs, which is funny. I, my first ever knitting in the round experience was on DPNs, and yet I don't use DPNs <laughs> at all now. I love Magic Loop as a general rule. So that is just as it is, but one day maybe I'll go back on the DPN bandwagon. We shall see. <laughs> okay. So that's summer sock camp stuff. I just realized how dark it's getting outside. It is, oh wow, time is flying. It's 5.30 now. It takes me a while to record these things. Um, I did have some technical issues as well, as I mentioned, possibly. Um, my camera just stopped recording and missed a whole chunk. So hopefully this isn't too bitsy. Um, so my next acquisition, which is another project bag, and I did order this a little while ago, 
is a project bag by one of my all-time favorite project bag makers Sandy by the Lakeside so there is her logo she's included just a tiny little logo which um, is embossed into the leather on this one rather than her usual um, by the lakeside logo and this is the black denim bag and it's one of her new style bunny bags so that's the inside fabric there I'm not sure if we're in focus I think we are in focus but it's just a really pretty internal fabric and a lovely durable denim on the outside so one of my summer sock camp projects will be housed in this project bag because it's brand new and why not? Um, and yeah, I couldn't resist that shop update. I understand she was having another one, I think this weekend maybe. If you are interested in any of Sa Sandy's bags, she has semi-regular updates, but they sell out super quick. So I... I'm rather obsessed with her bags and when there's something that I know she's going to be selling that I want I usually have to set an alarm so with this one I think I I stayed on the couch but I had an alarm set in case I fell asleep it was a pretty early one compared to usual there have been 2 a.m. and 3 a.m. updates my time for Sandy that I've woken up for this one I think was around 1 a.m. perhaps and I think I stayed on the couch, fell asleep on the couch and got woken up by my alarm um, to enable me to get one. Otherwise they would have been totally, they were sold out by the morning actually. I don't think there was anything left when I woke up in the morning and just had a look to see what the update was like. Um, Sandy's bags are very, very popular. So that is another acquisition. And now on to some yarn. Um, I... I'm very keen to cast on the String of Hearts socks by Maddie Hobbs who is uh, made by Maddie on Instagram and so I was searching for the perfect yarn to cast that project on with during summer sock camp. I don't knit a lot of patterned socks but this one just looks so pretty with the love heart cable down the side. Um, I do encourage you to check it out if you like patterned socks or if you like love hearts or if you just are interested in another pattern. Um, so I purchased this beautiful yarn from uh, Down Under Dyer to make that project. Now it did get a little squished in the mail but there's her label. A beautiful little cat. She does dye some beautiful yarn. And this is in the colorway Light Magnolia Speckle. And it is a four ply fingering, 75% merino, 25% nylon and there are 400 meters to 100 grams. When I was on Mel's Etsy store looking for that yarn and found the yarn that I wanted to knit those socks out of, I thought I'd check the rest of her site and found uh, some other yarn that I thought I'd share with you today because this will actually form part of the prize for the Whip Down Cal 2021. So if you're not aware, I am currently hosting the Whip Down Cal 2021, uh, both on Instagram and within our Ravelry group. And what it is, is just to encourage you to work on your whips. Anything that was cast on before April this year is considered a whip. And I don't expect you to finish those whips, but if I can encourage you to work on them and get some progress done on them throughout April and May, then that is brilliant. Um, sometimes we just need a bit of a push to pick up these old projects and get give them some love. So I found some yarn that I would love to share with you all. And I really wanted to find something Australian. So I was really happy when I found this. And it is also by uh, Mel from Down Under Dyer. And it is this stunning color called Nameria. So the colorway is Nameria, I think I'm saying that right. Now this is an 80-20 base. It's 
got some beautiful purples, blues, a little bit of a green in there. It's just such a pretty colorway. And when she had two in stock, I thought they'll be perfect. So one will go to one of our, our Ravelry winner and one will be sent to our Instagram winner when I draw the winners in at the start of June. So one of the main reasons why um, I wanted to record this morning is so that I could get this episode out tonight, the 30th of May. So you all had at least one more day to submit your entries for the Whip Down Cow, but given how late it's gotten, I feel like maybe I won't get a chance to do that now because it is so late and I probably won't get this episode out till the 31st Adelaide time. So, um, yeah, I will post maybe on Instagram about these prizes just to give you guys a bit of a heads up about that cow coming to a close. Uh, we've got up until the end of May. So now I know everyone's in different time zones. So I'm going to be a little bit flexible with you and let you go by your time zone rather than making it Adelaide time specific because we are in the future <laughs> compared to a lot of other parts of the world. And I don't want to restrict those entries. So keep posting your projects that you're working on. Pop some uh, progress pics in the Ravelry group. You can get two chances of entry then if you're posting in both of those, well, both the Ravelry thread and Instagram. And I can't wait to find out who these beauties will go to. There will be some other little bits and bobs and goodies in those prize packages, but I thought this yarn was just too pretty. And I had to share it with you all, or with one, two of you at least, one from Instagram and one from Ravelry. Um, so that's, I'm really happy with that purchase and with um, being able to share some Australian yarn with you. Okay, and my final acquisition, wow, we're finally there guys, we're almost there, is from another local maker called Ollie and May. Now Ollie and May, I, I found on Etsy, I think, and I fell in love with a bag that she had um, posted to her Etsy store a couple of weeks ago. So I ordered the bag and then a parcel arrived and it was this massive parcel. And I thought, oh, wow, that's, that's impressive. And I actually haven't opened it all yet because I thought it would be fun to open it in front of you because she's actually sent some extra goodies. So this is part of the parcel. Isn't it beautiful? She's wrapped it up so nicely. Now there's bits falling out but there's a lovely little mini here which is so pretty. I love the mints. I actually think I was checking out this colorway. It's such a pretty colour and there's a little progress keeper there. So that's an extra. Lavender sachet is also an extra and my room smells amazing with this in here right now. Love lavender. A tea because we all need hot beverages in our lives, especially it's winter in Australia or almost winter in Australia. And this is a vanilla retreat. So vanilla, cinnamon and chamomile, which sounds absolutely divine. And then, oh goodness, I ordered this bag and this is a surprise. So which one shall I open first? Let's show you the bag. This is the beautiful project bag that I ordered. And you can see how pretty that is. It's so beautifully made. It's got a polka dot lining on the inside, which I love. Have I mentioned I like polka dots? Yeah, I do. <laughs> but this is just perfect. It's a gray base with some pale pink flowers and a little bit of mustard in there. I absolutely love this color palette. I, when I saw this on Etsy, I ordered it straight away. Like I had no thinking involved whatsoever. <laughs> it was just so beautiful. So that's the project bag that I ordered. And then she's also sent me this. So let's have a look. Oh, thank you so much, Marie. This is so, so beautiful. So this is the yarn she sent me. 
So this is called Golden Sands. It's Marie's Soft Sock Base. 75% merino, 25% silk. Well that explains that amazing softness. And it's a single ply by the looks of it. So this will be perfect in a shawl. How, do, <laughs> how stunning is that? And so very generous. Thank you so much, Marie. Oh, wow. Blown away. That is so very sweet. And so Marie is in Queensland in Australia. We have quite a lot of Queensland-based dyes, which is quite, quite amazing, seeing as Queensland is one of our hottest states. So there's a lot of... A great culture of knitters in Queensland, regardless of the heat there, which is wonderful. So that is stunning, but that's not all. She has also spoilt my viewers. So Marie also included something for all of you. Well, one of you, <laughs> not all of you, just one of you. <laughs> lucky, lucky viewers. And this was sent as a giveaway prize. So this also includes one of Marie's project bags and I'm sorry if I'm saying your name wrong Marie, is it Marie? Marie? I'm very very sorry. Um, but this is that same yarn that I have which is very exciting and a project bag that she has made and a lavender sachet so we get to be twinsies. <laughs> so I guess we have a giveaway for this episode as well. Um, Wow, <laughs> very exciting. So I would like to be able to gift this to someone. Let's check if this is the same colorway. On Golden Pond. Ah, it's not quite identical. And Golden Sands. They are very, very similar. Absolutely stunning and so super soft like I cannot wait to wear this around my neck so so lovely so to enter this lovely giveaway um, just leave a comment below it can be anything you want it to be I um, love reading your comments so leave a comment below and I'll pick an I'll pick a winner in the next episode for this beautiful package thank you so much Marie um, completely in awe of the generosity of this okay so speaking of giveaways let's announce our giveaway for the thousand subscriber <laughs> giveaway from the last episode so up um, on offer for this giveaway is this beautiful mini set from ash and eve designs and a beautiful progress keeper in there as well with some stitch markers sorry about the crinkling and I have just drawn that winner and that is Knitter Big D I'll pop your name on the screen I can see that Knitter Big D is in the United States of America so it's very exciting to be able to share some Australian yarn with you so if you email me at fiberbound at gmail.com and send me your postal details I will pop the details on the screen here, my email details, and I can't wait to get this and some other goodies shipped out to you. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for subscribing and commenting. And I just am so grateful that there were so many entries for that competition and that so many of you decide to watch and follow this channel and leave such beautiful kind words on my videos it's so, so inspiring to read and so heartwarming to be surrounded by such love and generosity and I really do appreciate every single one of you now that pretty much wraps things up for today it has gotten very late it's very dark outside <laughs> oh my goodness what a weekend I did have one last thing actually to share with you
before I finish off for the, today, just a couple of podcasts that I've been really enjoying and I some of these are new to me, some actually one of these is new to me and the rest I've been watching for a while so I thought I'd share these with you and if you want to check them out go give them some love, like, subscribe, comment on their content, they do provide some lovely content that I really enjoy watching. So the first one and I think I've already mentioned her so Down Under Dyer, who is the dyer behind the giveaway yarn for the Whip Down Cow, um, she has a podcast on YouTube and it is the Down Under Dyer podcast. Mel is the host of that podcast and she is in Sydney. Now um, I think she's only got around three episodes out so far, um, but she talks a little bit about her dyeing, she talks a lot about her making and I've really enjoyed watching her um, so I do recommend you check her out. It's so lovely to find other Australian podcasts. There seem to be more and more popping up every week which is fantastic. It's so good to share in this community and meet people <laughs> um, even though we may not be able to meet face to face. It feels like you're spending some time with a friend who enjoys what you enjoy to do to the excessive amounts that I tend to enjoy <laughs> knitting. So Mel is lovely. Now in particular send her some love at the moment if you do check her out. Her um, little cat has been very unwell so she is a little bit quiet on social media at the moment but um, I had her listed to talk about um, sort of I've found her in the last couple of weeks uh, and I thought it would be nice to send people her way to send thoughts and prayers in her direction while she's going through a bit of a tough time. Now another podcast that I've been watching for a little while, I actually think I found them when they first um, started podcasting uh, and been watching them quite regularly but more so in the last few months um, I've checked in again and found them. So Rose Opal Knits, um, Erica and Daphne are in America. Uh, Erica and Daphne are a mother-in-law and daughter-in-law team so it's fun to see their dynamic. Uh, Daphne is the mother-in-law, no, no, sorry, Erica is the mother-in-law, Daphne is the daughter-in-law, Daphne is married to Erica's son and uh, they have I think one child together and um, it's just fun to see their different styles of knitting and uh, listen to them talk about their projects. Erica has recently designed her first pattern um, so that is very exciting. I'm not sure if she's at the testing stage at the moment um, but her last episode she talks about it quite um, in detail so please go check them out if you're interested in finding some new podcasts. I've really enjoyed watching them and my final one to mention today is Knit Now Swatch Later. That is Courtney and hi Courtney. Um, I've been following Courtney also since she pretty much started and I've tuned in to watch her every time she posts. I do really enjoy her content. Her episodes are quite quick and to the point. She doesn't seem to ramble like I do <laughs> and I wish I could be so succinct. Um, really do enjoy watching what she makes and she talks about some book reviews in her podcast as well so that's always fun to find something new to read. And she's also a bag maker so she sews project bags and has an Etsy store and I think she does progress keepers there as well. So I'll link her down below for you to check out. She's very talented as well and very fun to watch. Um, I think we found each other during summer sock camp last year or maybe one of Julianne from Twin Stitches Designs um, one week sock challenges. Uh, we, I think we were both posting in one of these challenges and I found her and followed her and then she started a podcast a few months later so <laughs> it's been fun to follow along with her and get to know her through her podcast. She's always been so super supportive of me as well so it's been fun to interact with her through those platforms. So I think that is all I need to say today for not having a lot of knitting content. Geez I can talk, it is pitch black outside. My kids are probably starving hungry. I'm pretty sure my husband has had a, made a start on dinner um, but I am amazed at how fast time flies. Um, I was going to share some life stuff and maybe I'll just touch quickly on that, not that I can remember any of it right now. 
Um, the thing that's taken up a lot of time this weekend is um, we're preparing to go on a big camping trip in late June and into July. Uh, so we've been busy uh, preparing a lot of our camping gear, repacking things, getting things organised and sorted and purchasing some new equipment and that sort of thing. So that's been taking up a lot of time and is the result of a very late night podcast today. And other than that, we're also doing a lot of selections for our house. So I've chosen the floorboards, we've chosen the kitchen cabinetry colours, kind of. I'm still a little undecided. Um, I still need to choose the paint for the walls and <laughs> it's doing my head in right now. Um, my indecisiveness is really terrible. But there have been some very set concrete choices already um, and we're very excited about the progress that that is sort of undergoing even though we're not seeing any real progress right now we're still waiting for council approval for our plans so there's still a little bit of a delay before we actually start that build um, but that's um, an exciting process to be able to make these decisions and sort of visualize how it all will be once it's done other than that school for the kids work that's pretty much been our lives. Oh, well, my son did do work experience a couple of weeks ago, or actually the last two weeks, he's been on work experience for a few days a week, um, and he's been really enjoying that. My younger, son, my younger son is playing soccer for school, so he's been really having fun with that despite the very early starts on a Saturday morning. We're having to leave the house at about 7.30 in the morning on a Saturday, which isn't fun but it's all good. It's, we've had some um, very good weather so far this season, which I know will not last. <laughs> we've only had, I think, three or four games so far, um, but I did pull out my, um, <laughs> now I'm in Australia and I'm not sure which word to use, um, my gum boots. Is that, a, is that an American thing or an Australian thing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because it was quite dewy overnight and I was worried about getting mud on my shoes. So that, that tells me the seasons have definitely changed and um, he had a great game. They didn't win this week. They've won the last three weeks before this weekend, um, but he's still enjoying playing. And it's really nice to see them running around again after last year of no sport. It's lovely to have school sport back again. Um, so I will finish off there now. I will stop talking at you and I hope that you have had a chance to sit down and relax a little bit with me. Please don't forget to enter the new giveaway in the comments below. Um, I love being able to share these amazing makers with you all and I hope that you've had a lovely weekend. It's probably the week already. If the week has started, then I hope that it's a kind one to you and you can find some time to rest and knit or crochet or drink a coffee in quiet, <laughs> whatever it is that makes you happy. So happy knitting, happy making, and I will see you in a couple of weeks. And I thank you so much for watching. Take care, bye. <laughs>